again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And somebody said we were loud. We Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> I mean, we are some of the louder ladies. Yeah. We got our mics. You know, we've yeah. learned to talk in this direction over and the we years. Were it, it's hit or miss. Like, it's, you know. I do know how to whisper. If people think I don't know how to whisper, I'm not really good at it. Because even my whisper, my tone is off. Right. You know, my whisper carries. Yes. So you learned that really quick. There's a song about that. <laughs> Isn't there? Oh. Something about voices carry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, a little pop culture. So here we are just oh. about mid-December. I think um, we're done for the year. We're done for the year. <laughs> no. I, um, Dan and I, are ma we make it a point. Like, we don't, we don't do a big... We don't conform to the holiday norms. Like we don't force ourselves to have to go to a big Thanksgiving dinner or host a big Thanksgiving dinner. And you know, we don't care if we're home on Christmas, it's fine, right? Uh, but we do in December and then through the New Year's, but particularly in December, cause Christmas immediately ends, you know, at five o'clock on Christmas day, it seems. <laughs> um, try to go out and do, you know, festive things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember where I went last weekend. Isn't that funny? Didn't you go for look at the, the lights? No, I'm going to go. Um, so I did. I think I posted a link on the Manch Talk Facebook page um, t that I saw in, I believe, Manchester Ink Link or whatever. And then yesterday I saw two maps that I will try to post this afternoon that were Manchester specific. Personally, I think the lights over in Bedford near Market Basket, like, I mean, Everything's nice. just a little bit better in yeah, Bedford. Yeah. But I mean, if you're going to do a drive, don't just stop at the city line. Go through the ones over off of um, Donald Street and stuff because there's some really nice ones over there. But um, I'll, we'll probably try to do that um, next week, closer to Christmas, like maybe the 23rd or whatever. But what we're going to do this week is um, I saw on Facebook, somebody else had shared it. We're driving actually to Elliott, Maine. Oh, wow. And there's a big light thing. It's a mile long walk. Oh, wow. And I thought, what the heck, right? And, it gives, and, and Dan needs new gloves, so we got to go to Kidder Trainer. Yeah, like it's a whole thing. So that'll turn into a whole thing. I did, just to keep it more in New Hampshire, um, I did see that there's a similar light thing at LaBelle Winery in Derry. Um, shorter, so maybe for smaller kids, maybe a little bit more concise. You can get a cocoa and all that stuff. Um, it's fun. It gets you out of the house. Um, the other thing I did, because we'll start talking and then we'll run out of time. Um, I'm going to try to I do I have some on, opinions about yeah. past week. <laughs> um, Saturday, both days, Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Um, so I guess that's maybe the 18th, 19th, 17th, 18th. 17th, 18th, because okay. it's Louis' birthday on the 18th Aww. and it's the World Cup soccer final. Oh my goodness. Um, so there is a holiday market, and I did put it on my phone. There's a holiday market at the factory on Willow Street, which is where they... They've got the mixed use. They've got uh, condos and common space and everything. Um, Saturday, December 7th, 10 to 4. Sunday, the 18th, 10 to 3. Presented by Loon Chocolates and 603 Chicuterie. Free mm. admission, live music all weekend. Food provided by the Potato Concept and 603 Chicuterie. <laughs> I'm assuming when they say provided, it's not free. Um, Apollo Vineyards Wine and Rockingham Brewing Beer. So I'm like, oh, how fun. Um, Picks with Santa, Santa Where 11 is that to 4. Again? It's the factory on Willow, so it's not on South Willow, it's on Willow. It's one of those mill buildings that was converted into condos. Is it the one on Valley Street? Kind of near, but it's on Willow. It has like a homeless shelter at the oh, bottom? No, 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 with... this doesn't no. have a homeless shelter. This well, is nice. I mean, uh... no. But anyways, there's like a whole list of all different vendors. So I thought, see, I like doing that because I'm, like we just go out and buy things for ourselves, like for each yes. other. Like, hey, you want that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's buy that. Okay, sure. I, uh, I'm, I'm taking Louis to Boston on Sunday yeah. for his birthday, so we're probably going to do, do. We, we are doing. I already bought the tickets, but in the off chance that he might watch the show, which he never does, I'm not going to say, but it's an art exhibition oh, nice. in Boston that sounded kind of cool, and then probably like some Chinese dim sum yeah, or something, something just you know, little whatever, yeah. or maybe a charcuterie plate because yeah. those are always good. As so it's well. good to get out, you know, like it, we finally got a little bit of snow that'll all probably melt tomorrow because it's gonna be like 40 or thursday it's gonna be 40 degrees on thursday so there's a good chance a lot of it'll melt yeah um, i did my my flip-flops and socks in the snow <laughs> this morning so uh i definitely felt quite yeah. uh granite i didn't realize winter, it was snowing I, I saw like poof all of a sudden there was a coating on the lawn on sunday afternoon and i was like what the heck happened and then all of a sudden i got a 
Monday morning and I have no idea. I apparently don't watch the weather. And I was like, oh, there's actual like snow. I should find the tr the brush and like, yeah, totally yeah. ill prepared. So I mean, it'd be nice to have a white Christmas. Yeah. It often isn't. Yeah. I would say in the 50 well, years I've been yeah, here, it's, it's, not, it's half, maybe it's half not on, half off. So um, it's always nice. Yeah. So, so that's the festive stuff. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Twitter files? Twitter files are dropping. That's proving to be entertaining, if not illuminating. It's not anything that surprises me. Um, the commentary that comes from Elon Musk leads me to think that there's more than what we're actually seeing. Um, I mean, so so for folks back home who maybe aren't 100% up to speed, uh, basically after Elon bought Twitter, he said he was going to restore free speech. A reminder to everyone, things or facts you don't like are not necessarily misinformation. Right. Like we've ended up in this world where people are literally just saying like, oh, I don't like that fact. So it's misinformation. So it's misinformation. Or it's extreme. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, everything is what? Mega, ultra, super, oh. extreme. I'm going to make that t-shirt for next year, actually. A mega, uh, ultra. A, a, a mega, ultra, uh, ultra super ex, you know exped, exp, uh, well, super uh, super califragilistic expel diet whatever yeah. <laughs> extreme um so the 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 various twitter files you can find them with hashtag twitter mm. files there is one two three four five and number six is being teed up to come out number six will be the covid files i think that's mm. going to be incredibly interesting yep. um from a personal perspective you know, someone like me who is actually, you know, when I'm not clowning around, I'm a real card carrying attorney uh, on two continents. And so one of the issues I was really interested in with the, the COVID mania was looking at things from a legal perspective and saying, hey, guys, as the world, what is the ethical rules by which yep. we are allowed to mandate experimental treatments on the uh, unsuspecting populace, right? So the ethical standards are defined through the Nuremberg Code, which, you know, your two second history lesson <laughs> was way back when, you know, the Nazis were like, what? We were just following orders. And everyone, including, you know, the Nuremberg trial was like, we don't, don't think, think that's a defense. You don't actually just get to be like, my bad. I accidentally murdered a bunch of people. Right. So not good enough, right? So out of that Nuremberg trial, uh, people were hanged, they were held to account, and a code was written that is a 10-part code that talks about what we are allowed to do in terms of experimenting on humans. Now, lo and behold, I got censored off social media for not expressing an opinion for things like posting the actual mm. Nuremberg Code line by line on Twitter, taken down, doing screen grabs, posting it on Facebook, getting the giant warning on it. So it's that level of frustration that is now bubbling up. Yeah. So by way of example, this morning, uh, David Frum, a journalist, uh, you know, tweeted out and he was like, oh, these people with their Hunter Biden fantasies and, and you know, tying it to like Trump and, and sort of going, well, people only care about this, these issues because of Trump. And I was like, no, here is the point. We care about these issues because there's independent, actual objective truth. And if there is, then it means that if you weren't allowing the truth to come out, then people like me who could give a flying fig about Trump one way or the other, yeah. we care about the fact that subjectively someone made the decision that objectively these people are not allowed to speak. So the so Dr. Malone, who's the original person who is who made mRNA technology, yeah. who was banned off Twitter, yeah. who was the doctor who was saying, whoa, 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 guys, like, we don't really know what this stuff's going to do. And based on all this past science, it doesn't look good. Maybe we should pump the brakes or at least have some 
kinds of checks and balances mm -hmm. beyond the VAR system or beyond these things so that society and uh, American doctors and everyone do don't get to pretend there's nothing happening. So I think this sixth round, we'll the COVID dealt. files, are, is going to be massive. But, you know, my point to David Frum was we're not mad about this because of Trump. Right. We are mad about <laughs> this because... Everything doesn't revolve around Trump. Because what these files have shown is that, one, with regard to Trump, there was government collusion mm. between big tech and the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, where they literally censored and took down information yep. that they should not have done. So whether you're left or right or an alien or green <laughs> or whatever, whatever you should be concerned when people are saying there is one story you're allowed to know yeah. and this is the story. Because you know who does that? Bad guys. Yeah. People still trust right, the New York Times. Nobody blocks the truth. People, people never block lies. They block the truth. Yeah. I mean, nobody panics over a lie. Everybody goes, that's a lie. It's the when they block the truth that you have to worry. And honestly, I mean, it, it, it's, 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 I'm gobsmacked. Oh, that's, that's a good word. Um, I'm uh, just constantly gobsmacked when I see these comments coming from the mainstream media, like big names, people who should know better, people who should actually objectively want to seek the truth, who seem to actually have like brain damage. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't know how else to describe it. When people are just caught up in this, in this, this narrative of, of who cares about Trump? I care about the truth and what we did as a society so that next time maybe we don't make these same stupid mistakes. So frankly, from my perspective, you know, I would go with the Socratic quote of, uh, you know, I hope Elon does not fuss about all the people, all the slander, he got booed and all of that. So far, I'm still saying he feels like he's on the side of humanity. Yeah. At least we're trying to grapple with with the insanity, yep. literal insanity of the past three years. And maybe we can do some kind of reckoning. I'm going to push hard and I have been pushing hard and I'm going to lean into it for this Nuremberg 2 stuff. Mm -hmm. I do think we actually have to have real hearings. And the question becomes, Tammy, and I don't know if you have an answer to this, but all these people lie to Congress. I know. All the time. And we I can know. literally prove it side by side, which is, of course, why they want the censorship, because they don't like it that we can now just put out things going, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, right? Like, yep. they hate that. But they lie to Congress, they lie in front of hearings, and nothing happens. Well, that's why I thought it was funny. So I do love Elon's tweets because they're usually short and concise and little things. So the two, and I shared them on my Facebook page. The first one I saw was, my prono pronouns are prosecute and Fauci. And I was like, hmm, that's telling. There's something coming. And then the other one was, um, Twitter's both a social media company and a crime scene. Yes. And it makes you just go, you know there's more there. Right. And the thing is, you know, for me, and I think I've said this consistently over the years, right? Like, one... I feel like I was pretty right about everything. Like I was a lab lead proponent from the start. We can go back, we can find the clips, right? We definitely talked about gain of function research. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the fact that Fauci's NIH. Oh, you know what I learned yesterday, by the way? So Fauci's wife of Works 35 years oh, no. is the bioethicist who is the head of bioethics at NIH. Yeah. Uh, so she is the watchdog watching her husband. Their net worth increased by over $5 million last year to about $12.5 million is what their estimated net worth is currently. Now, Fauci is the highest paid mm -hmm. federal agent yep. in America. He makes about $490,000 a year. For he what? makes more than the president. Oh, I'll tell you for what. For 40 years of lying, 40 years of, it turns out, bunk science, 40 years of just nonsense, if you actually go look at that man, yeah, like if you look at the history with AIDS, 
Yeah. If you look at, you know, the experiments with the beagles, if you look at what he thinks is acceptable human practice, yeah. look, I understand science is science. You have to maybe do experiments. But do we need gain-of-function experiments? No. no, we don't. See, so this is how it works. You don't get to sit in a lab like a crazy scientist. I mean, there's a reason there's a trope called the mad yeah. scientist. <laughs> like, literary history will tell us this is an issue. People get caught up in, like, ooh, right. can we make a Rottweiler glow in the dark? Right. A real experiment someone is working on. So, so they actually took viruses and they made them more lethal. What they tell themselves is, well, we're doing this because some other bad guy might also do this, so, so we, we want to do it first. And I'm like, could you just cut the tape right there and look at it objectively? You are the bad guy. Yeah. You are literally the person making the dangerous virus. Anthony Fauci in 2012 said on the record in an Australian article that he thinks gain of function research, even if it causes a pandemic, would be worth it because the, the, the science outweighs the cost to humanity. And I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but I went through the past three years and I don't think that's true. We don't know the harm that is still coming, yep. but Rasmussen, sorry, I took like allergy pills this morning so just <laughs> <laughs> bear with me so my Rasmussen which is a large polling yes. company it is objective yeah. you see their polls yeah. all the time I don't think they have any kind of agenda I think they're just people who did a poll yep their poll that came out on I think Sunday yep. that it has had zero oh of course not we're gonna zero we're not gonna mainstream coverage much like there was zero last week we said the there Twitter. was seven seconds on the Twitter files last Sunday there was zero seconds on the truth that is coming out um, Rasmussen did a poll and according to that poll extrapolated, so they didn't survey 12 million people, but extrapolated based on the numbers of their poll, 12 million Americans have had severe reactions to the vaccines. These aren't the mild ones. This isn't the arm pain and I felt a little shit and I had, yeah. excuse my French, <laughs> um, or you know, I had to stay in bed for two days afterwards because basically it just, made me sick or whatever, severe reactions. So face paralysis yeah. to, uh, you know, advanced fourth degree cancers, yeah. right? Um, 12 million Americans, if that number is correct, and I'm starting to think based mm. on the numbers I'm seeing and the data and the reports I'm seeing come out of Israel, um, very highly vaccinated countries, it seems like that trend may be correct. And, and that we're gonna have to reckon with. I mean, if everything that is coming out now is true, in my personal opinion, Fauci should hang. I'm, uh, so, 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 so pot, no, pot. No, no, there's other things. A <laughs> um, couple things Concord related, cause you know, you and I might be more in tune with what's going on in the state legislature than not. Um, First, um, up in Concord, uh, the legislature had organization day last Wednesday. Um, Sherm Packard, who was the Speaker of the House, was reelected to another term as Speaker of the House. That means our good friend Jason Osborne is the majority leader again on the Republican side. Matt Wilhelm, who's from Manchester, um, had been running against um, Speaker Packard and he didn't win, but he is, I believe, the head of the Democrat the Democrat side of things. Um, is, is it still literally a 50-50 split It's 101, now? 197, something like that. Um, interesting, again, twist of actual news, the way things are portrayed. Um, there was one race out in Rochester that was a direct, a tie, and the legislature has to do, decide what to do with that. Um, out of nowhere, uh, Matt Wilhelm, the head of the Democrats, came up and made a motion to call for a special election in, or a runoff election in February, which the legislature can do. Um, and he was kind of flustered or whatever. And a Republican got up there to move to table it, saying, can we at least push this off, all this craziness off until after the holidays? You know, like, can people just enjoy Christmas without <laughs> people running a special election? Which I was like, okay, what's the harm in that? And 
the Democrats and the news seem to twist it that somehow it was Republicans trying to block there being this runoff election, which I was like, that's not actually what it was. It was a, can we delay till after the holidays? Because they barely are there. They're not even, I mean, these people... I don't know. So anyways, it's just interesting how even little news stories get twisted into different news stories. And the Democrats keep saying that Republicans were trying to, you know, usurp the will of the voters in Rochester, which all they tried to do was table something until after the holidays. Well, table that. And also the alternative was, if I if they I have my facts straight, is they could flip a coin. They could so flip you could a leave coin. it to Lady Law. Yep. And they could also, um, if the Republicans had made the motion and had the votes, they could have just seated the Republican or the Democrat for that matter, in the seat. So there were options. Um, so that's one thing. So in the, uh, we'll see committee assignments coming out of the House soon, and you'll start seeing LSRs um, being publicized. Uh, Jeb Bradley is the new Senate president. Sharon Carson's the majority leader. Donna Susie's the minority leader. Their committees are set. Um, but then the other thing in, tied to Concord is um, the, the head of the NEA here in... Um, I think it was a actually the head of AFT, which is I believe the American Federation of Teachers here in New Hampshire, has filed a lawsuit Suit. to mm. try to end funding for education freedom accounts, which are benefiting a ton of children in the state and giving them better opportunities in education. Um, Institute of Justice has signed on on the opposite side of that, so that was good news. Nice. Um, I'm fairly confident just from past experience because I do not believe we put the that the legislation for education freedom accounts was brought forth without some serious vetting about what would be considered constitutional or not. Um, but the bigger picture is I don't understand how people can be so opposed to kids getting a good education. I don't get... I'm sorry, it can't just be about the teachers' union. It has to be about the kids. And if these children are benefiting by us spending... You know, taking four or five thousand dollars from the coffers that go to the public schools and giving it to individual children, and we don't actually give it. There is no voucher program. Parents don't get a voucher to spend however they want. They are allowed to be reimbursed for certain expenses relating to their child's education. Imagine that letting parents use their t school tax dollars to actually educate their child. Well, I mean, I don't that, get it. But I'm also like, you know, when I was in Costa Rica, I had a long conversation with one of my friends who's also, I would say he's like libertarian light. And he was mentioning, he was like, why don't, why don't you, he was like, why don't you do a better job selling your philosophy, Carla? But he was like, you should talk about everything through the lens of choice. And right. I was like, well, I do. It's just those are never the sound bites that make right. it to the BBC or to right, you know right. the news or whatever, right? The sound bites always <laughs> the worst part of anything. But but you know we we really school choice. Like if you if you want the choice to murder your baby At and you think and you choice. think that this is an okay like uh, moral position, which you know I don't know how many loops you got to do in your brain, here's a good one for folks back home. Why do we say life, if we find bacteria on Mars, we say we found life on Mars, right, but, but you won't baby. say a heartbeat is life on Earth. Anyway, so if you want the choice here right. to murder your baby, then you better give people the choice here to let them educate their children well, and, and according the, to their values. And the argument from the left is, well, you can choose to do educate your children. Then I'm not going to pay the taxes. I agree. I, I pay school taxes and don't have any children in school. I would like to know that my tax dollars are being used to best benefit the children, not to best benefit the bureaucracy that is the public school system. I get that years ago, you know, maybe way back in the day, there was churches teaching and maybe there, and then there was the public school and okay, we have to say we're gonna fund the public school, but the public school isn't doing such a great job anymore. And and things do change over time. And if, if- Look, look, I mean, anyone, how many old companies still exist? Right. I mean, maybe like Shell and some it's of the, many. you know, the JP Morgans and, and right. those guys. Right. And mostly because, you know, they made a lot of money and yeah. they're just taking a really long time during their, their gaming the system for their benefit. Right. 
But really what you see evolutionarily or through through the lens of history is things and systems have to shed because yes. eventually like it just things it gets change. things change, they right? Change is like we literally like... have the internet now. We didn't have that forty years <laughs> right. ago. Why is anyone still going to a brick building? Where we're forcing all these children, by the way, to get like 72 doses of heavy, unhealthy things. I mean, I don't know, man. I know people are like, oh, I'm not anti-vax. I'm just anti-mandate. I just finished a book that, quite frankly, made me anti-vax. I think that is another thing where we're just going to have to peel back the science and start to go, what is going on here? Um, I think of those 12, that R Rasmussen yep. report, the interesting, one of the interesting data points out of that was the most vaccine skeptical are mothers between the age of 30 and 50. And I was like, hmm, isn't that an interesting demographic? Because perhaps the mothers of the world have been saying, you know what? You jab my kid and now they have autism. Right, right. Then they're gaslit to be told that isn't what's going on. I mean, the same thing happened when I got sick after the forced jab I got in 2008. And people were like, there's no way that gave you rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm like, I'm 36 years old at the time and I'm healthy. I don't know what else it could have been. That was the one thing that mm. changed. That was the one thing that happened. Anyway. We should uh, yeah, leave on a I know lighter we're note. Out of time. Um, so make sure you get out there, enjoy the holidays this weekend. Shop at your local stores if you can. Uh, you know, I am on my way to the antique store because I want to get eight little not matching cups and yep. saucers that I can do little uh, nice little soup in yep. because I'm doing a big uh, charity dinner, nice. Nice, which nice. I had to cancel from Saturday because we were nice. so sick to um, this one. You know, there's great places to, to shop in and around Manchester that aren't necessarily all just the big box stores. Not that you, there's anything wrong no, with No, and I'm grateful either. for Amazon too, too, but. But, you know, get out there. Um, on the weekend, there's plenty of festive things that you can do if you've got kids, you know, take them out. Um, McIntyre opens this Friday. You can ski in, I believe, snow tube starting Friday um, at, I don't know about the snow tube part. I know you can ski starting Friday at McIntyre. So that's an awesome thing right here in Manchester. People should take better they advantage They make of. snow up there? Yep. They've been making so they snow make... for, for a week or so, and there's enough they'll open on Friday. Oh, nice. Anyways, that's all we've got for this week. We'll be back next week. No, we won't. Yes, we will. will it's we? not Christmas next week. We have oh. another week. I thought you said no. but this was the last one, and then we're you done. You said that was oh. the last one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll try. We'll be back next week. Uh, one more show before the holidays, and all that's right. all. We'll see you next week. Bye, Bye guys.